704 Eastern Time. So I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, this is our fourth and final session. And mostly we're going to be working in small groups tonight. I have a very short presentation that's a little bit of a recap, a little bit of a reminder, and a tiny bit of new material. Um, I want to first of all, thank uh, Erica Edelson, who presented last time so well. Some of you might have seen an email just in the last few minutes uh, linking to an article Erica's just had published in Yes Magazine, which is truly a must read, very much on, on topic for what we've been discussing. And Erica will be facilitating the um, Talk Differently group. Also really, really thrilled to be joined by Cody Lawning. Cody, Erica and I together have been working uh, kind of as a subgroup within a larger national group that's trying to um, move this rural urban divide uh, to a new level of understanding and action. Cody's been fantastic. He's a professor of history and politics at Eastern Washington University. And Cody is gonna facilitate the Think Differently session. Um, and then I will facilitate the Act Differently session. So. In just about 10 minutes, um, you all are gonna be asked to pick one of those three. And then we have about a 30 to 35 minute time to generate ideas, to discuss what's possible, to really focus on next steps that you might be able to take maybe collectively in some subgroups or just individually back home. So that's the process for tonight. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my screen. And while I'm doing that, um, Oliver, if you wanna say a little bit about both the logistics and a bit about uh, the university, some of what you'll be sharing uh, coming forward, and then I'll talk about the connection to the university. Sure, yeah, I, and I just dropped in the chat um, a flyer for the university. Um, so this event has been hosted by Future Generations University. Um, it's a fantastic, um, university does, does a, a lot of community development work. Um, I am an alum. I, I received, I just graduated actually um, this month and um, just received an opportunity to learn all about community development, working um, in the community that I'm a part of, and then learning from professionals like Anthony um, how to Im improve the quality of life for the people in my community. So highly recommend you check out the flyer. There's, there's some awesome classes coming up um, this fall. And um, if you want to also visit our website, it's future.edu. I'll drop the chat uh, or the link to that in the chat as well. Um, Anthony, anything else you wanted me to speak about tonight? I think you can no, the breakout that, rooms. That's, that's, that's we're gonna yeah, move. that's great. I, I might have you just walk people through the breakout if they haven't done that when we get to that point, Oliver. Good. But yeah, again, and just as, as somebody um, who's served on the serves on the board of trustees and has also taught a class at Future Generations, it really is an unusual university. It really is one that came out of practice and uh, built an intellectual and academic framework around that. Most universities struggle to connect to practice to the real world. It's quite the opposite. So check it out. And also for those who are able and willing, please consider supporting Future Gen. I think there's a link for that as well. This seminar has been free, uh, but obviously there've been costs associated. So it would be wonderful to have your financial support as well. Also wanna again, thank Like and Knowledge and Appalachian Voices, we've talked about them in the prior sessions, along with future generations, they, they create a nice three leg stool of uh, real world action oriented, uh, transformative social change. So really thrilled to have had them as part of this. What I want to do now is a very, very short presentation that uh, precedes our breaking into small groups. And this is a little bit of responding to some of the comments, concerns, critiques that we've gotten um, offline or in the chat box, as well as just sort of wrapping things up together. So we've spent most of the four sessions talking about the problem and how we got here, the underlying causes, where we began talking with Erica's help last week about potential solutions and, and what we can do differently. And that will be the focus tonight. But let me just give you um, four or five thoughts. So the first is, 
a number of folks have talked about labels that they've found it frustrating that we we meaning me <laughs> particularly but others have um have also been using the same kind of labels that are part of the problem and that's true liberal conservative progressive trumper rural urban etc so i think we can and should try to avoid the use of labels but i also want to say that we can't avoid the fact that they are more potent than ever. We are sorted into identity groups, often ideological and political, that are just so very powerful at this point. So we can't avoid that. So I think what we've tried to do and what I hope we do with the labels is only to recognize that most of us are in one or another or perhaps a couple of these camps. And our job is to figure out why people who aren't on our team feel so differently from us and how we can get beyond the label. So, you know, we'd, we'd all like to believe that we're all in this together, but actually at this point in our history, not only in the US, but in much of the world, um, folks aren't seeing it that way. So we have to build trust to, to get to that point where the labels don't matter. Second thing is there's been several people have expressed an interest in focusing on the commonality, what unites us, what brings us together. And I think we'll talk about that in the small groups in a variety of ways. That's absolutely essential. But <laughs> a couple of things to recognize. First of all, it's, it's harder than it used to be, at least in my 64 years, to find commonality partly because the divide is so intense, the lines are drawn so fiercely that the labels and the divide and all of the narrative of the divide makes it really difficult to find commonality, even in the most everyday ways. So that's just a fact. It's also true that social media, the lure of subcultures and many other elements help sort people and, and distinguish us often uh, violently rather than unite us. And that's a reality. And the, and the other is that in the real world, we're heavily segregated, certainly by race, but also by class and by culture. We don't share that many common spaces anymore. Now, there's work to overcome that, whether it's farmers markets or downtowns or, or virtual spaces where people are reconnecting. But the reality is we, we live in separate worlds like we never have. The third thing I want to say about commonality, which again, I think is absolutely the essence of what we have to do, is that it probably won't work if we keep it at the level that's vague and ab abstract. So often I'll hear people say, you know, we all want the same things, or at the end of the day, everybody wants what's best for their kids, and those kinds of sentiments. But actually, it's not exactly true. We have to recognize that we don't all want the same things. A lot of us want similar things. For many of us, there are places to begin where we have similar needs, similar aspirations, similar goals, but we don't all want the same things. There are real differences. And I think we have to recognize that so that when we talk about finding and building upon commonality, we're doing it with not only a practical mind, but with a real world understanding that it, it isn't the same for everybody. And we, so we need to work to find those places of commonality. That's my experience. Fourth and a little bit different, we've, we've only talked tangentially about media, but I wanna make the case that we, and, and some of you in the chat box already have, including my wife, Lori, that there really has to be a media component to this. Now, some of you might be in the media world and others might just be in and out of it as a consumer of media. But the truth is that as much as interpersonal change is a big part of this, how we interact in our relationships, who we interact with, absolutely critical, but it ain't enough. And we need to not only shift our personal voices and personal stances and interactions, but our public face as well. So that might be all kinds of social media platforms. It might be the traditional media of letters to the editor, or op-eds. It might even be radio and TV segments. But whatever we're doing in our own small way or our own big way, media really does need to be part of it. And let me mention a couple of resources that I would love to encourage, or I do encourage you to look into. One is called the Public News Service. 
I can't go into it much except to tell you that it's a little more than 20 years old. It's a national news network that aggregates stories, but it does more than aggregate. It takes current stories and produces short, primarily radio segments from 30 seconds to two minutes about issues of import. Many of those segments relate directly to the concerns of working folks and rural people. This public news service started by a remarkable woman named Lark Kobe is in over 600 radio stations across the country, about half of which are conservative talk radio, radio stations. And they are producing these short and not only producing, but getting um, a regular diet of their stories, which tell a more progressive story about the world and what's possible out there. So look up public news service. They're looking for more grassroots partners, and they could be a tremendous help to our effort to change the narrative and, and stop the overwhelmingly negative spin. And then look into community-driven media. Apple Shop in Whitesburg, Kentucky is one of the longest standing and one of the best in the country with film, a tremendous radio station, um, uh, teaching of students in media. They're just, they're a remarkable organization. Apple Shop is a model. A couple of you have mentioned them in the chat box. We have our own little version closer to home in Emory, Virginia called WHC. And they do community-based media, much like um, Apple Shop, not to the same level of sophistication or diversity, but uh, same thing. Let's look for support and engage with community-driven media because they can be that alternative voice. I'm going to, a few more slides here, and then we'll jump into our small groups. So one of the groups, again, is Eric's, Eric is going to be facilitating the talking differently, and that is so important. But I want to be clear that if you take one thing away from this, it is that we need to change the way we communicate. It's critical, but it's not the only thing. Just as importantly, we need to change what we do in relation to the communities and the people that are on the other side of the divide from many of us. And it's both what we do and what we propose to do. And I wanna just mention, there's a, a group called Justice Democrats. Some of you might be part of it or might be familiar with it. They're, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, point the finger at them, but they're an example of a national group that's kind of risen to some prominence in the last few years that's focused on justice, that's focused on helping the little guy and gal and leveling the playing field with the rich and the powerful. Good, very good group. I looked through their platform. This is the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things on their platform. There's actually 11 more. So they have 20 things in their platform, most of them based on some potential public policy. There is not a single thing in the the 20 issues they raise, nor even when you read through them that relates to rural, that relates to agriculture, that relates to small towns that have lost a manufacturing base. It, it is typical of liberal and progressive organizations, I'm afraid, that rural simply gets left out. So when we're, when we're talking about what we do, we also need to recognize what we don't do. So we framed it last time that moving forward, this rather simple framing that I've suggested, thinking differently, acting differently, and talking differently, those are the groups you'll get to choose to participate in in just a couple of minutes. Um, I want to add, and, and I do this with some trepidation to add to uh, what Erica shared last time uh, in the realm of communication, because she did such a fantastic job. But I, I've come around to, after 40 years working in rural communities, to also having some sort of ground rules for communication in rural communities. I'm just gonna quickly share them and then we're gonna, we're gonna jump into our small groups. And this is, this is ground rules, not just for urban people, but for all of us. Uh, first is don't talk so much. We do tend to be very, very verbose, um, very circumspect in our language. And I'm suggesting two things that we need to listen a whole lot more Erica talked about this in her article, and we need to get to the point way quicker. Second is to use real world examples, preferably local wherever possible to explain and ground your ideas. Once you've got somebody where they're, you're in a, a real conversation and you're both talking and listening, it's really helpful to, to have 
familiar examples uh, local where possible. The third, and a number of you talked about this in the chat last time, is avoid jargon, avoid the sense of talking points. Again, Erica's most recent article talks a lot about that. Jargon, um, activist speak, whatever you wanna call it, nonprofit talk, it tends to be both um, mystifying and alienating to people. I think almost everybody, if you're not in that particular circle. But as I said last time, let's try to talk like a neighbor rather than like an activist or an advocate. And then the last thing, just to sum it all up, is let's be concrete and particular. Because um, straightforward language tends to build trust. Even if people disagree with you, if you're clear, succinct, and straightforward, people at least don't feel like you're trying to pull the wool over their eyes. Um, we're going to share with you a, a little resource list, but here are a few as a starter of organizations. Now you've got the guidebook. Um, we've, we've mentioned in the guidebook a number of excellent books you can pursue, but also here are some terrific organizations that um, work on in different ways, uh, elements of understanding and overcoming the divide. So I would suggest that you uh, look into them. You can click on those links, we'll send you that list. So that's really it. I'm gonna stop my screen share. And um, at this point, we're ready to go into the small group breakouts. We'll have about 30 minutes for them. And then we'll have uh, a few minutes for a quick, like two to three minute report back. And then we'll wish everybody well and send everybody off. So if we wanna go ahead and Oliver, if you'll post those um, three options, and then we'll ask people to start selecting. It, it should display as a, a pop-up um, saying that I'm inviting you to a breakout room and I'm seeing a number of people joining at, the, at this moment. Okay, thanks Monique. Let me see if I can send a message out to everybody. Yeah, it should be a button that isn't usually there. Thanks, Emily. Um, it says breakout rooms. You might have to click more and then breakout rooms. Yeah, that's what I had to do. Next click to more, reactions, and rooms. more and then breakout rooms. And if anybody's struggling with that, no worries. I can hang back and I can manually assign you. Um, so, yeah. So the options are there. You're just self-selecting which breakout room you'd like to join. And if you need help with that, just let me know. So it's more and then breakout rooms. Okay, Stephen, I am. Um, I can put you in that room, Matt. Um, if you type in the chat which room you'd like to join, I can do that as well. Got it. So Stephen, I'm gonna assign you to how to talk differently. Matt, did you did you say that I understand correctly that you want to be in the same? Okay, got it. Matt, I'll put you in that room. Um, I see Alexis, you want to do talk differently as well. I can assign you to that manually. Sounds good, Betsy, I can send you over there.
Anybody else who's having trouble getting to their breakout room, let me know. I can send you manually. Renee, oh, she made it. So I see Alice, Bruce, Kelly, and Mike. Kelly, you want to go anywhere? Are you able to go wherever you want? Do you have those powers? Cool. Yes, I use my powers for good. Alice, did we manage to get you into a room, Rohan? Uh, you can yeah. use your voice if you want. That's interesting, because Ro Rohan Kelly is is showing up as in how to think differently. Yeah. In my list. If you want to try and go out of the webinar and come back, we can try and that's our our yeah. IT response. That's the best. <laughs> that's the reset button, Mike. I'll put you in think differently. Thanks. Alice said something at one point, but she hasn't moved. Uh, wow. These are big rooms. Oh, that where, Alice? No? Where did Alice want to go? I didn't see that. I thought I read it, but. Alexis did. Oh, Alexis. Um, uh, maybe they're moved, like Bruce has gone to get a coffee <laughs> or tea okay. or whatever. Oh, Rohan. I'm here. I'm here. I, uh, I'm clicking on uh, how to talk differently and nothing's happening. I wonder if it's maxed out. Yeah. I sent, yeah. I sent you talk a chat, uh, Oliver. What's that? I sent you a chat. Okay. Yeah. Let me, yeah, let me try, Bruce. Okay, thanks. Talk differently. There you go. Oh, there went Rohan. Yeah, I, I just sent Rohan in to his room as well. Um, it's, yeah, it says Bruce not joined. Interesting. Where are you don't, seeing? Oh, I have a, you don't see like the top of the list. It's like the people that are here. And then if you look through the list, oh, he's there now. Yeah, mine just says Alice. Welcome back. So a lot of us are floating back into the main room. Um, I think people are welcome to hang out for it looks like another minute and a half. So everybody will be back at that time. Um, but it's just giving people a chance to wrap up conversation. Our clock said that we were down to the last three seconds, Oliver. So I guess I, I guess I shortchanged our group by by jumping in. Maybe maybe if if Emily or Bob or anybody else who didn't have a chance to speak wants to say anything real quick as other folks are coming in. Cynthia, anybody have any thoughts you weren't able to get out in our little time? I'll do 15 seconds. I used to consider myself a moderate and a centrist, but the country has moved so drastically far to the left in the last year that I am now being called a conservative. Um, the single biggest problem for me is that I am a psych major and I believe that I'm very conscious of my communication and I make a real point to try and be um, non-confrontative. But when I speak to liberals, they shout me down. They do not even give me 20 or 30 seconds before they begin to shout me down. And um, that enrages me, I must say quite frankly. And that is the one thing that I would ask you all to do is just listen. Uh, thank you, Cynthia. Oliver, are we pretty much all back or still one of the groups? Looks like Cody's group maybe is still out or? Yeah, uh, they're coming back. Okay. It looks like we're just, yeah, it looks like everybody should be back now. Okay, great. So we're going to do some quick, 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 quick report outs and then a wrap up. So I'll start with um, uh, Cody's group uh, thinking differently. Cody, you want to give us a quick report of some of the conversation? Yeah, sorry. We were the laggers there. We were just taking it right up to the wire. Um, you know, so, uh, some of our concrete steps are a little less concrete because we're talking about uh, changing the way that we think about these things. Uh, but one of the, the suggestions I really loved in our group was, was make sure to cross-pollinate with folks. 
uh, we from the context of there are a lot of folks who move to rural and kind of still stay in their own kind of click of people, kind of newcomers. You know, try to spend some time with with the old timers as well. And we had a really a good specific concrete step: attend every church supper you can. You'll be you'll be well fed and you'll get to know folks uh, well. Th thanks, Mike, for that suggestion. Um, in terms of kind of your one-on-one -on -one interactions. Think about what you admire in the other person. You might, there might be a lot of disagreement. There might be a huge cultural divide, but what do you admire? There's almost always something we can admire about uh, somebody we're interfacing with. Um, also listening. Uh, we had a suggestion about uh, reading stories of people's backgrounds. Uh, there was a good point in the group that, you know, the way that people behave and what they do, they almost always have a reason for doing it. So, so either, uh, you know, find a find a book about that that person's way of life, or in talking to that person, uh, really listen to why they've they're approaching life the way that they are. Those are some of the some of the steps that we were talking about in our group. Great, thank you, Cody. That's terrific. Erica, you want to report out on the communications group? Yeah. Um, so we had um, one idea that's um, one of the members of our group is already doing, which is um, she's organizing social gatherings in her precinct, um, a series of gatherings called Penny for Your Thoughts. Hmm. And it's a potluck. And then it's a series of um, discussions that begins with just kind of meeting each other, getting to know each other. Then the second one is where um, people start saying, what are, what are the local issues in, in need of attention? And then the third one, people are talking about how to how to solve. Um, what are some of the solutions? So good, good old fashioned local organizing. Um, another idea is um, kind of to take it away from the political and try and um, come up with an idea for a common project that people could undertake together that that's not political that would just help break down kind of the tribal hostility that's built up. Um, one idea for that, someone said, hey, everyone loves to create a new dog park. So get together and create a new dog park in the neighborhood. Um, a couple of ideas around media. Um, one is to produce um, original content uh, for a local radio show. We didn't get terribly specific there. And then also on the, um, uh, there was a TV producer in the group who would like to create a TV show that, that like films people coming together to to talk about what their needs are and possible solutions. And ideally, like they would come to some kind of agreement and then viewers could like see that happening and would sort of be an antidote to what you normally see on TV, which is just people endlessly fighting with no resolution. Um, and then the last thing was um, just um, to connect with groups like Braver Angels and Hands Across the Hills to get the resources you need to start hosting formal dialogue uh, events in your local community. That's great. Those are excellent suggestions. Thank you, Eric, and thanks, Cody. Real quickly on our group, uh, besides not having enough time, uh, a number of interesting ideas came up. Um, one was uh, Renee, who already works, she's employed by an um, environmental organization. I think it was the National Caucus of Environmental Legislators, something in that vein. And she was talking about how of late they've begun to refocus some of their work on how can they make allies of farmers and rural people with policy that, that supports and incentivizes good agricultural practices, everything from land stewardship to carbon sequestration, et cetera. So she's, she and her group are beginning to do that and looking for help and resources to, to make that move so that farmers and rural people are not the enemy, they're, um, they're allies in that work around climate change and other environmental issues. Uh, there was discussion about connecting to churches, whether your own kind of church that you might come from, the Episcopal, Catholic, whatever, or whether connecting with, with local churches that are already doing work. And that also, as, as your group discussed, Erica, brought up the possibility of doing local projects, undertaking projects with local churches or other well-rooted, well-respected local organizations that, that already have creds in the community. And to do that in a nonpartisan way, but also at the same time to do it with your, 
your brand, your whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a progressive, whether you're a liberal, whatever it is, whether it's a local justice organization, um, not being shy about that, just not um, just not beating up people about that as well. Um, and then there was also a lot of discussion about, and Marianne was the first one to talk about this, that when we show up in rural communities, we've got to be aware of the kinds of things we've been talking about for the last four sessions. And she talked about her work around single payer work and that this summer they're going to be taking their message to county fairs. But how important it is when you go to the county fair not to be proclaiming your kind of self-righteous stance that some, something like healthcare is a human right, which many of us might believe, but that wearing a t-shirt like that or a cap like that can immediately close the door to somebody you might otherwise have a conversation. So be very conscious of how we show up. So obviously this was um, a, a little sampling of possibilities. We're right a minute shy of the close. I wanna just say a couple of things. Um, first of all, thanks to the sponsors and thanks to all of you. We, we had about 40 people tonight. We started out with almost 90. It reminds me of a, a friend who was a Lutheran minister who talked about if, he, if his message was direct enough and strong enough, like uncompromisingly biblical social justice enough that what he would do would preach down the, con the uh, congregation. He would preach them down every week so that they went from several hundred to about eight people who believed him. So hopefully I've not preached you all down to this small group that we have. So that's one thing. Second is really please consider contacting me directly. You can find me through my website, anthonyflacavento.com, www. Um, and let me also suggest that the kinds of things we, the conversations we had here, if you thought they were fruitful, if they were enlightening at all, let's try to have them in your home community. Let's have them with your group. Let's have them with the networks of people you're part of. So I, I make that invitation to any and all of you. And then the third thing is, I think we, we have a group of participants who know just how critical overcoming this divide is to everything else we believe in, to a more civil society, to a more democratic and just society, to tackling the big daunting issues that have been plaguing urban and rural communities for at least a couple of generations now. If we don't figure out how to whittle away at this divide and begin to reconnect with neighbors that are right now on the other side, it's almost impossible to make progress on all these other issues. So it's critically important. You all are the, the ones that have decided not to write off your neighbors, but to keep working on it. So I know that after this, you're gonna get an email with some suggested additional resources with a little survey that future generations will put together. And, and one possibility would be then at that point, if you, for those who want to share and exchange contact information, uh, there would be the possibility of something continuing out of this, whether it's uh, a one-time open-ended forum discussion that future gen, facilitates or whether it's little subgroups of people working on similar kinds of things, um, we're gonna try to facilitate you all allying with each other, with us, with me, with Cody, with Erica and others to, to try to move things forward. Because we're not doing this for as an intellectual exercise, we're doing it because the world depends on it. So I wanna thank you very much for your participation, your candor um, and, and hope this has been um, of value to, uh, to all of you. So I'll say good night and thanks and hope we